chase a high-powered bullet to its target, then steal in his bare hands. Superman, who walks around among ordinary mortals, disguised as mild-mannered Clark Kent. And here he is, Clark Kent. Hello, everybody. I just want you to know that I consider it a rare privilege to say a few words of greeting to the members of the Independent Magazine Wholesalers Association of the South. But I should like to take this opportunity to change to Superman. In behalf of my publishers, publishers of action and detective comics magazines, I want to welcome you to this independent news company meeting. May I also say that I'm very happy to be here with wait you. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I've got something to say here. Say, who are you? Who am I? Do you ask who I am? That's what I said. Who are you? Why, I'm Harry Donenfeld, your boss. My boss? I never even heard of you. You've never heard of me? No. Why, you... Look, I took you off a drawing board and made a man out of you. I splashed your name from coast to coast. I put you in magazines, on the radio, and in newspapers. I just completed the arrangements to put you on the screen. And you never heard of me? Step aside, Superman, while I say a few words of greeting to... Curly Sandoval and Ruth Wiener and the rest of my friends here. Superman doesn't step aside for anyone. Say, I think what you need is a little trip up in the air. Come on. Hey, ouch! Let me go! Let me go! Sorry, you need to be calmed down. So up we go. Up! up. Hey, take me down! Take me down, uh, Superman! Uh, how do you like it up here a thousand feet in the air? I don't like it. I got a weak stomach and any minute I'm going to lose it. Please take me down. Okay, here we go. Down. Here we are. Oh, where are we? Where am I? Why, we're back at the Independent News Company meeting. Oh, thank God. Now look, Superman, let's be friends. No more tricks, please. Okay, we'll be friends. And just to prove that I am your friend, I'll fly you back to New York when the convention is over. That's what you think. For my money, an airplane is fast enough. <laughs> Look at Harry run. Well, goodbye and good luck. Who is the most popular comic strip character in the newspapers today? I give up. It's Superman. You mean our guest tonight is Superman? No, not <laughs> Superman. Our guest tonight is the man who originated Superman. He has written all of Superman's exploits since this idol of millions made his first public appearance. He's Mr. Jerry Siegel. Good evening, Mr. Siegel. Good evening, Fred. So you are the man behind Superman, Mr. Siegel. Uh, no, I'm just one of the men, Fred. I write the situations and the dialogue, and the strip is drawn by my collaborator, Joe Schuster. Well, you seem, uh, seem rather young to be the instigator of this highly successful feature, Mr. Siegel. How old are you? 25. And how long have you and Mr. Schuster been working on your high-voltage Robin Hood? We, we started about eight years ago, but Superman has been in print only the past two years. Well, what caused the delay? Cirrhosis of the batteries? <laughs> no, Fred. It took us six years to sell Superman. Uh -huh. He was turned down by almost every comic editor in the country. Well, they laughed at Fulton with his steamboat, you know. <laughs> I guess around your home, Superman was known as Siegel's Folly. <laughs> tell, tell me, where did your strip first appear? In May 1938, Superman came out in a magazine called Action Comics. Was he well received? The strip attracted so much attention that the publishers decided to give Superman his own magazine. And his popularity increased then by leaps and bounds. Yes, Fred. Today, Superman is in 218 newspapers, reaching 20 million people. He's in magazines, on the radio, and now he is going to appear in Paramount Shorts. Well, who, just who is Superman supposed to be, Mr. Siegel? He isn't old Frank Merriwell with a dynamo in his union suit, is he? <laughs> Uh, no, Fred. Superman is a super being who came from the planet Krypton. He uses his tremendous powers to fight evil and injustice. Say, he can do about anything, can't he? Uh, Superman can run faster than a bullet travels. He can lift an ocean liner out of the water. And uh, he can even stop a train with his bare hands. Can he open a Pullman window? <laughs> Easily, Fred. What a man. 
I noticed that Superman is always benefiting humanity. Yes, Fred. He saves people from floods, stops wars, and he's always breaking up crime rates. Well, fortunately, Superman only exists in your imagination, Mr. Siegel. If he stamped out all of our crime... J. Edgar Hoover would be reduced to playing bits on gangbusters. <laughs> now, tell me, how far ahead do you have to write your strips? I usually keep three months in advance. Oh, you're so afraid of your syndicated Frankenstein? Uh, no, it's Mr. Ellsworth, the editor, and my wife. They get after me. They do, huh? Mm -hmm. Why don't you get Superman after that? <laughs> well, it must be a wonderful... It must be a wonderful feeling, Mr. Siegel. Twenty million people waiting with bated breaths to see if Superman is going to pull up the Holland Tunnel and blow the Perisphere through it for a spitball. <laughs> and, you, and you are the only... It's Mr. Holland. Thank you a lot, Mr. Holland. <laughs> Every time we plug the tunnel, Mr. Holland claps. You know, it's very nice of you. And uh, you are the only man in America who knows what's going to happen. I don't feel any different, Fred. Oh, you're just being modest, Mr. Siegel. After all, you dominate a muscular marble with a dual personality. When Superman isn't Superman, he's he's merely disguised as a reporter, isn't he? Uh, yes, he's Clark Kent, a meek little chap with glasses. When Clark has to perform a miracle, he switches to that uh, Superman harness. Yes, he wears athletic tights and a long cloak. Well, what I can't figure out is this, Mr. Siegel. Now, how does he change his clothes so fast? Well, after all, he's Superman, Fred. <laughs> I wouldn't care if he was Gypsy Rose Weinstein. <laughs> Nobody can get into that long underwear ensemble in less than five minutes. Now, how does Superman do it? Uh, confidentially, Fred, he wears his outfit under his business suit. Oh, when he's Clark Kent, he has those streamlined bell brigands on underneath. Is that it? Right. He's always ready for action. Well, if he wears woolen underwear all the year round, he sure gets action. <laughs> well, thanks. Thank you a lot, Mr. Siegel. I certainly enjoyed this opportunity to get the lowdown on Superman. It's always a pleasure to talk about my protege, friend. Say, confidentially, if your jumbo Peter Pan can use a part-time job, I have a little chore coming up around the first of the year. Superman is good at lifting things, isn't he? Uh, yes, Fred. Uh, do you want him to pick up something? Yes. Uh, my option. <laughs> I'm afraid that's the one thing that even Superman can't do. I get it. Uh, good night, friends. Good night, and thank you, Mr. Jerry Siegel. Superman came about because uh, both Joe Schuster and I were uh, great science fiction fans back in the 1930s. And to fill you in a little on the, really the beginning of it all, one night, as has been mentioned in uh, past stories, ideas kept coming to me and I kept getting up again and again during the night and just jotting down these ideas and uh, these scripts until uh, very early the next morning I dashed over to Joe's house which is about 10 blocks away I, I showed him the uh, script of Superman the entirely new concept in which there would be a meek mild man a reporter Clark Kent uh, Lois Lane who scorned him but who was uh, who flipped over su uh, Superman not knowing that Superman and Clark Kent were one and the same person now, you want, to stay, was, you want to stay with your reaction? Well, I was, was very, you... very excited about the whole idea. I just, uh, I just uh, uh, took on uh, the same enthusiasm. <laughs> I, I thought it was a terrific idea, and we went right to work uh, right then and there. You sat down at the at drawing that, board, and, we you, spent be, the and you began day. designing the, uh, the way the characters yeah, look, Yeah, we right? spent the entire day working on it, all afternoon, and, and we uh, at the drawing board, 
Jerry and I, and uh, no, I remember designed, that the uh, matter of, of the costuming of Superman yeah, came up, and, and yeah, I, re I remember uh -huh. two suggestions I made well, to you. One uh -huh. that the letter S well, be be on his chest. Right, as I wanted a to give him a skin tight costume to to show up his physique. For one thing, and then Jerry suggested putting on a, a cape. A cape. So that when the character cape, zooms uh, so through the air, would give more more flowing, action and movement. Make to it the look character. like he's really flying, yeah. and uh, very very. And colorful. of course, yeah, you added all those and additional the, things like yeah, the yeah. the boots and the yeah. belt and the yeah. and, and, and the whatever. To make it as simple as possible. Yeah. And what about Clark Kent? Well, uh, uh, both Joe and I, uh, you know, wear glasses, you know, most of the times. And it uh, occurred to me that uh, there was no uh, adventure comics to appear at that time who wore glasses, so I thought it would be quite uh, different to have Clark Kent wear glasses. And also, the wearing of glasses <coughs> gives the impression of meekness and mildness, mm -hmm. which goes into Harold Lloyd, <laughs> the, mm -hmm. the influence of Harold Lloyd on mm -hmm. us and his movies. We were both great movie fans, yeah. and we, we especially loved some of those movies in which Harold Lloyd would start off as a sort of mama's boy being pushed around kicked around, thrown around, and then suddenly we're turning into a fighting whirlwind. It was part of my own character, too, uh, that I put into it. Uh, I was kind of mild, meek-mannered, uh, mild-mannered. <laughs> and wore glasses, so I, I really identified with it. Did you look in the mirror? And sort of oh, think, oh, many times for expressions, yeah. For facial expressions, I did look in the mirror. Oh, yes. <laughs> that, was, uh, yeah, that was part of it. That was part of the fun. Can you show us the, what the original Superman looked like? Here's the pencil sketch of the original Superman. That, that was the uh, first cover of the Superman book. That was 1939. And is that how it actually appeared? Yeah, that's how he appeared. See? Right. You were saying that some of the, po the Superman poses, um, how, did you, how did you get them? Yes, I was a great fan of Douglas Fairbanks. And uh, so was Jerry, and uh, I tried to use uh, uh, that his stance, uh, the way Douglas Fairbanks looked in the, the Black Pirate, with hands on his hips, and this, uh, this see Robin Hood, and the Mark of Zorro, and, and all of those. He had this marvelous uh, attitude, which uh, Jerry and I agreed. Well, in writing the script, I had Douglas Fairbanks very much in mind in the athletic stunts that he did, too. So it, it, the influence of Douglas Fairbanks was not only in the art, but also in the, in in, 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 in the visual, uh, visual action. Uh, the Duke has carried out his promise and parades his prize before the admiring eyes of the pirates. This is... Um about how I looked when I posed for uh, Joe. And here's another. How old were you then? Uh, I was in my uh, later teens. I was in my mid-teens when I posed for Joe. I thought she was the perfect uh, ideal for Lois Lane. Just represented uh, uh, my, uh, my image of her. And we got to uh, talking, we got to know each other pretty well. And he told me that I was exactly uh, what he was looking for as a model. And he had his drawing board set up in the back room and we went back and we got to work right away. And uh, when we got uh, finished, uh, Jerry was waiting out in the living room uh, waiting to meet me. And uh, so we met and uh, we uh, got along well. And he was also a very shy boy, but very energetic. He was always in motion. We never realized uh, that day that this would turn into a lifetime friendship. It's a bird, it's a plane, it's Superman, fighting for truth and justice. See, the adventures of Superman. Oh, good, good. 